Hi, it's Ariel with Auto City in El Cajon, San Diego's award-winning used car dealership. And this is a Chevy Volt. That's a Nissan Leaf. And this is a BMW i3. And what class do these three cars have in common? Well, let's see. I know the answer to this one. Oh, that's right. All three of these cars are electric. It's electric. Here we have three very different cars. Different in looks and styling. Different class sizes. Differently priced. One American, one Japanese, and one German. For all intents and purposes, these cars don't have much in common, but do share a common bond. All three are on the same mission. The mission to move us forward into the new world of driving, into the world of the electric car. And they offer you three very different routes to take on the journey into the future. Let us start with the faux grille clad Chevy Volt. This 2015 model is the penultimate generation as the new Volt has been rolling off Detroit's assembly lines since 2016. The Volt operates somewhere between an all-out electric car and a hybrid car. It's a hybrid hybrid running entirely off the electric battery until the battery capacity drops below a predetermined threshold. From there, the gas-powered engine kicks in and powers the electric generator to extend the vehicle's range and can also be linked to the drivetrain, thereby running like a regular gas-powered car. I think I said that right. It like makes this noise like a, like a, like a slot machine in Vegas and then you look at the screens here and you have two screens with, with all this technical readout stuff and it looks like a slot machine in Vegas. Push this leaf button here and then you get a complete readout it must take some time to really understand all the things that these electric cars can do and, and this vault there's definitely a learning curve to figuring out all, it's like it's like getting a computer and figuring out all the things your computer can do oh i do have drive modes what are the drive modes like oh i have normal and sport and mountain okay yes let's keep it in normal for now and and uh Let's see how this thing drives, shall we? That's nice. You won't ex you don't expect that in an electric car this this real chunky prindle here. I I kind of dig that. That kind of reminds me of some some good old-fashioned Chevys. It smells like a Chevy in here. All Chevys smell the same. Driving the future. Even with the gas engine that I'm using now, the thing rides like it's floating on it feels like, okay you know what it feels like it feels like a ride at disneyland like one of those old school rides that are like this is the ride of the future of the past do you know what i'm saying it's like it's like it's like Tomorrowland. the thing i love most about this vault besides the flash like lightning bolt in the logo is this fastback style hatch which opens up on a big slant, making for a large opening and has a huge trunk. Not just huge, but practical. It's one thing to have a spacious trunk, it's another thing to have it shaped so that you can make use of all the space. This trunk is long and wide and deep and it's a big square. There's a lot of trunks that are big, but the wheel wells get in the way and it's odd shaped and the, the floor is not flat, so you can't make use of all the space. You can actually make use of all the space. And of course, folding the rear seats down makes even more space available to you. The car that this hatch reminds me most of is the old Saab 900. I'm talking about the pre-General Motors Saab before they bought the company and ran it into the ground. It's got that electrical whine. As a driver, as a car, it is quite smooth, I think because it's an electric car or at least a hybrid. The steering is very lightweight. There is no efforts to steering this car. The acceleration is lightweight. There is no efforts to accelerating this car. It's not very fast, but what do you expect? Uh, you're not gonna win any drag races in this car, but you know, it's powerful enough for what it is and actually quite comfortable enough. Just the dash here is fascinating. So this little ping pong ball moves up as I accelerate and it moves down as I brake. Check out this horn. <laughs> it's a little pedestrian horn. 
parking brake off, all right? Electronic parking brake, as to be expected from a modern, particularly modern car. No backup camera? It's gotta have a backup camera. No, no backup camera? Okay. Thank you, goodbye. I remember when the original concept car for the Volt first came out about 10 years ago. It was so striking. It was really refreshing to see the American auto industry design a car that was both unique and handsome and whose design stood the test of time but also had this incredible technology that was looking towards the future. When the Volt finally came on the market, we got this, which is kind of disappointing compared to the concept car. It's very basic and just looks like a typical Chevy, but now that I had the opportunity to look at this car up close, I gotta say I'm not disappointed. It really is a practical mid-size vehicle with five comfortable seats and that huge trunk that is reminiscent of like a Saab 900. It's a really big trunk. So while the car might not be as good looking as I had hoped it would be when the concept came out, it really is a practical and useful car. Boy, if I'm this excited about a Chevy Volt, I can't wait to get into the BMW i3. But you know we have to do the Nissan Leaf first, right? Yeah. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Okay, next on the docket, the Nissan Leaf. Thank you. Like the Volt, it has that little greeting sound. And this car is so quiet. Wait, let me turn the AC off. The car is on right now, it's operating. The motor, whatever it is, is ready to go. It is absolutely quiet as a mouse. Quieter than a mouse, as a matter of fact. We're gonna turn the AC back on though because we're in El Cajon, in the desert. Parking brake off and we're off. The LEAF is powered exclusively by an 80 kilowatt electric motor producing around 110 horsepower with an average range of 100 miles. Depending of course on your driving habits and environment, heavy stop and go traffic might limit your range to about 47 miles, but low speed cruising without the use of air conditioning can extend your range to about 138 miles. Not the most impressive numbers overall, but the Leaf is not pretending to be anything other than a daily commuter. Plus, with its easy-to-access plug-in charging system, it can be fully recharged from zero in about eight hours through the night while you sleep. Unlike the Volt, the Leaf does not have an internal combustion engine at all. This is just electric motor, which means when you run out of battery power, you don't have a gas engine to fall back on like you do in the Volt. This car is optimal for city driving, short range commuting. Like the Volt, this Leaf has a lot of practical functionality. It's a reasonably sized hatchback with spacious front seats, decently roomy back seats that fold down and you do have a large trunk. It's not quite as square and doesn't have as much usable space as the Volt, but, but it's a bigger trunk than most subcompact hatchbacks in this class. You just can't take this thing camping up in the mountains 300 miles away. Still, other than the fact that it's an all electric car, which is neat and innovative and uh, pretty amazing actually, it's a subcompact Nissan hatchback. There's nothing terribly special about this car. There's not a whole lot of interesting options or comforts it's a basic economical car. Still, you have an LCD screen with a CD player and aux and satellite radio and all that stuff. And you have a backup camera. And I can't complain about any of that stuff. That's nice to have, but you know, it's not very incredibly fun to drive. And what does that do? What's that do? Why is that? What's that indicator there? Well, we've saved, if not the best, certainly the strangest for last. This i3 by far is the furthest thing from what we know and conceive of as an automobile. I mean, it's a completely foreign world in here. Starting the car with a push button start up here. It greets you with the I am an electric car noise that they all do. And you have this crazy column shifter up here, which is 
you know, not like an old school column shifter, but it's, it's got like, you have to kind of like it, it's, I don't, it's like an electronic, uh, and then you get a video game of your car here on the screen. It's absolutely insane. But then of course there are other things that remind you of the fact that you are in a BMW, this sort of classic climate control and radio panel, the uh, iDrive system, which is, you know, this is the same iDrive system that you get in all modern BMWs with the wheel and the, the ticking and the talking and the menu and the media and all that stuff. I have a couple of different drive modes which we'll try out. Let's go for a drive. BMW's quote-unquote urban electric vehicle employs the use of a lithium-ion battery to propel its four efficient, albeit gigantic, wheels. With the equivalent of 170 horsepower, this little electro box is no slouch. Its lithium-ion battery provides the car with a range of about 99 miles, though higher trim levels like this i3 also include a gas range extender, bringing my range up to about 200 miles. So if short daily commutes are your thing, rest assured that your range extender i3 won't require nightly charges. It's definitely a new way of driving. The other two cars drive more familiarly. This one is the most foreign car I've ever driven. Wow. As soon as you take your foot off the gas, the gas, as soon as you take your foot off the accelerator, it feels like you're slamming on the brakes. That must take some getting used to. Just looking around here, you have all these fascinating materials. I think the BMW i3 takes pride in the fact that it's made from recycled materials. So rather than putting up a high quality uh, leather style dashboard, they use that recycled plastic up there, which is quite fascinating. And like other BMWs, the car takes off pretty nicely. It's actually a pretty solid, sturdy drive, and you could get up to speed, up to 40 or 50 miles an hour without any problems at all. Of course, like the other cars, it's completely silent, and you just get that whirr as you go along. But man, this thing does in fact take off. We're gonna try some different drive modes here. Right now we're in comfort, so there's very much no sport mode in this car, but you have Comfort Eco Pro and Eco Pro Plus. So let's see what Eco Pro Plus does. I still can't get used to what I'm looking at. I know I've done a video on this car in the past and I was equally as enthusiastic and excited and just confused and dumbfounded and I still have not gotten used to looking at the controls of this car, it's completely from the future. You have two screens, the Volt had two screens as well, but you felt like you were in a car in a Volt. It was a cross between being in a Chevy Malibu and a Toyota Prius. This is a cross between being in a BMW from 2060 and a frickin' spaceship. Okay, first of all, the door handle opens backwards. See that? I love that. It's just unnecessarily weird. Let's open up the other side and look at it all together. Oh, look at that. It's so, so open and freeing. Look at that. I feel like I could just, I could just sort of like dive through it, you know? Definitely the most modestly sized trunk of the three cars. It doesn't really go deeper than where the hatch meets the bumper and there's no hidden storage because I'm pretty sure that's where the battery tray is. Yeah, you, you can't put anything under there. Still, you, you can fold the rear seats down like you can in most cars if you need some more space. Best part about this trunk though, this glass panel is just so pretty. Okay, now I know what the Eco Pro is doing. The Eco Pro turned my air conditioning off. Well, it's 95 degrees in El Cajon, so we're going to go back into comfort mode because I would like that AC, please. Thank you very much. Breaking on its own. It's going to take some getting used to, but these are the cars of the future, and this is what we're going to have to accept if we want to continue to drive non-autonomous cars. Some of the stuff is scary and strange and and foreign and and look as a car guy i'm i'm resistant to some of these things i i don't want things to change but they have to but some of these changes are exciting i'm really looking forward to seeing where we end up 
where the electric car meets with the driving enthusiast and what that becomes. And that's it. And we're done. Thank you very much. Okay, so how do these three electric cars stack up against each other? Well, let's start with the Volt. Despite there being a little bit of a learning curve with its complicated digital instrument cluster readout situation, I think this is most like a regular car. It's got an impressive hatchback trunk and it's quite roomy on the inside and it's fairly easy to drive. I think they were going after the Prius with this car rather than straight up electrics. It also does have a gas powered engine inside, but at 35 city, 40 highway, while those numbers are impressive, they're not incredibly innovative and state of the art. There are a lot of cars out there that can get that same sort of fuel efficiency these days. Still, if you're looking for something to sort of ease your way into the world of electric cars, this is a nice stepping stone into that world. And for that, it's pretty good. Moving down the line to the Leaf, I do feel that the build quality is slightly better on the Leaf than the Volt, but that's mostly just comparing Nissan to Chevy, and that's just my opinion. But besides its all electric motor, there's not much in the way of new technology or wow factor or features or options or add-ons. It is for all intents and purposes, an entry-level subcompact hatchback like its gas-powered sibling, the Nissan Versa. Still, it's a plenty good car. It's got space for four, maybe five people. It's got a plenty large trunk. And if you can put up with its quirky looks, this car will definitely get you around. It does have a short range electric motor, so I wouldn't take it on any long road trips. The Leaf is not quite ready for that yet. But if your plans are short daily commutes and nightly charges, this is certainly the most affordable of the three. And finally, the i3, which is certainly the most unique and quirkiest of the three cars. Unlike the Leaf and the Volt, though, this is not playing it safe. It's not saying, hey, we're just a car. No, this defies everything you know as a car, from its shape to the, to the, to the window lines, to the way the doors open, to these tires, which I like to call bicycle tires. They're huge and thin, and these wheels have some sort of turbine air charging, I think, I don't know, I don't know what it does, but anyway, this thing is so far out of left field and everything about it is new and different, even the way it drives. The throttle response is like nothing I've ever felt before, the way the car pretty much stops when you take your foot off the gas. It's a new way of driving and a new way of thinking about cars, and that's really exciting. Not only that, the technology in this car is just so advanced. First of all, it's a BMW, so it's got all the latest and greatest iDrives and this and that and all the different cameras and sensors and all the everything you get from any other BMW, plus all the technology involved with it being an electric. It's certainly the most unique, but it does take a lot of getting used to. You have to really be committed to moving on from what you know as cars and really taking a step into the future. You know, the thing is though, besides the Volt, the Leaf, and the i3, there are a lot of electric cars out there to choose from now. Pretty much every car company has their version of, if not electric, at least a hybrid car, and more and more alternative fuel vehicles are being made every day. It's fascinating, it's scary, it's interesting, in another generation or so, the internal combustion engine is going to be gone and we're all going to be driving these things. It, it just depends on where you want to be with it right now. Your options are out there. The Volt, which has a gas-powered and electric engine and feels like a car and is practical and useful. The Leaf, which is inexpensive and economical. The i3, which is crazy and wild. Which of these cars would I have? That one. It's a Beamer. If you'd like to come take a look at any of these electric cars or any other cars we have in our award-winning lot, come see us in El Cajon or visit us online at GoAutoCity.com. Thank you so much for watching.